Who better to push the boundaries of live entertainment than one of New Wave's most quirky, innovative, and thoroughly enjoyable acts? If you haven't watched Stop Making Sense, the 1984 concert movie of Talking Heads, I'd suggest that you stop right now and go experience it for yourself. Because it is an experience, an immersive audiovisual celebration that utilizes theater, music, and film like nothing else, and that also happens to be free to watch on YouTube at the moment. And the reason to call it a celebration is because while it is regarded as a concert movie, I think it's a hell of a lot more than just that. Let me explain. Audiovisual entertainment is something that we engage with on a daily basis. It's anything that gives you something to look at and something to listen to. It's been the foundation for entertainment for literally millennia. Think of the first humans telling stories whilst creating shadows on cave walls, or early theatre such as with Greek plays all the way up to the tons of types that have come since. The reason that there are so many forms of audiovisual entertainment is because it utilizes the two senses that we engage with the most, and I feel that you can group these into some broader categories. Theatre, which is pretty much anything that is performed on a stage. Music, where the visual component comes from watching an artist performing live. And film, which I'm using as a term for any video or moving images made for entertainment purposes. While all of these are their own audiovisual formats in their own right, there are also formats that cross between between them, such as opera, music videos, and of course, concert films. Stop Making Sense, however, crosses all of these boundaries within one piece of media. In terms of theatre, not only is it actually filmed within a theatre, but they include set pieces and props, with a narrative form by how these are introduced on stage. It's of course undoubtedly a piece of live music, I mean, the band are playing instruments, right? And in terms of film, it was created with a deliberate intention to be captured as a video, which we see through the shot choices, camera positioning, editing, and collaboration between the band and director Jonathan Demme. The smoothness in the blending between these gives the film such an incredible amount of polish. Every decision here is so deliberate and so well executed, which is why I find it hard to consider it as anything other than a fusion of all of these. And while media from these formats that I mentioned previously certainly are restricted in referencing or recreating other formats within themselves, it's the deliberate intention that Stop Making Sense makes to analyse these that I think makes it so remarkable. Remember that I mentioned purpose earlier? Well, that's what I've been trying to spend the last six months uncovering while I've been totally obsessed with this thing. To me, it seems keen to delve into our wider relationship with audiovisual entertainment. Throughout its millennia-long history, it's been used to reflect our own existence, to explore ideas in ways we can't through conversation alone. It builds on the emotional and communal ways that we organize ourselves as a species, including both as a way to escape that and a way to analyze it. There's a sense that we need to have it in our lives, and that, even though it can be used for malicious or purely profit-driven motives, it does benefit our lives overall. Think about all the ways in which you associate yourselves with medias that you really care about, the ways you build attachments and obsessions to them and how you can end up defining yourself by using them as a pivot point. Stop Making Sense can be read as an analysis of that association, breaking down both what it is and why we put so much effort into cultivating it. Band member Chris France described in an interview how a lot of its stylistic choices came as a rejection to the influence of MTV at the time. Instead, the band wanted fewer distractions away from the members and the music, allowing the audience to form a personal relationship with them. Stripping that down so significantly allows us to consider how merely seeing it and hearing a band on stage captured on film can create an incredible emotional attachment, and this is further reinforced because it conveyed the nature of the band's music. Talking Heads often wrote very observational lyrics. While there was plenty of imagination in them, a lot of the time the imagery was very grounded in the real world. They even named an album more songs about buildings and food, which frankly speaks for itself. I find that I spend less time interpreting their individual lyrics and more time interpreting the wider meanings behind their songs and albums. The protagonists in them often express an anxiety towards the world. They question its setup and conventions, trying to decode the confusion that it creates. And I'll stop making sense they seem to reach a conclusion on this train of thought. Rather than trying to make sense of the world, you should stop making sense. Can I just stop for a moment and like just try to put into words or try and express what how good a name Stop Making Sense is. Can you imagine when they just came up with that? Like, it, it, it's so innately talking heads. It, 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 they are the only band that could have genuinely made something with that name on it, right? But like, the, the amount of meaning that they put into it, you know, th th there's so much being conveyed by it. 
it's it's an exceptional statement, you know, like everything that we do in the world, like, you know, there has to be some sort of logic or reason behind it. We have to have a kind of like a process or a system, you know, whether, whether or not we consciously or unconsciously consider that whenever we do things, like, you know, like opening a door or something or going to work or whatever. And it's not saying like, oh, you know, don't go to work or whatever. It's not like some sort of like socialist revolutionary kind of statement or whatever. It's like, no, more fundamental than that. Stop making sense. I don't want you to make sense, you know, and it doesn't even imply that we should all just start, you know, speaking or expressing ourselves in gibberish or anything. It's like, I don't know what it is. It, it just does something to me where I'm like, that, it's just the best thing you could have, it's the best way you could have named it. It feels like almost it's the, 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 like the final conclusion of everything that we're trying to do in the world. Everything that we do to try and understand ourselves and understand the world around us. And it's like, the more we uncover in that, the less we understand, the less we actually realize we have, the, the, rather, the more we realize we have like no control over that and the less we understand why things happen the way they are. And it sort of says, screw that, move on, just find yourself, do whatever it is that, that you know to be true. It's so profound and so like, euphoric, almost, right? I'm gonna stop fangirling now, because, God, I could be here forever. It's that name that also provides a lot of context to the significance of its blending of theatre, music, and film. Amalgamating three of the most popular forms of audiovisual entertainment under a brandishing like this gives us the ability to consider why we value it so highly as a species. Through those deliberately simple stylistic choices, the band are questioning what we need from entertainment, further both in David Byrne's iconic line, and even on the taglines and artwork for the film. Is it still possible to form these strong bonds with medias when they are stripped down and sprinkled with a hint of cynicism? The answer for me at least is that we definitely can, not just showing how obsessed I am with Stop Making Sense, but also in the film's effect on its audience. There is an exhilaration in so many parts of this that is just so fundamentally human. The dancing, the sweat, the crowd upon their feet, the ways in which the band use their bodies, and the ability that the film continues to have to make people want to move. Now this is not to say that all entertainment exists to make us want to get up and dance, but I do find it quite interesting that this very human form of expression is found at the core of the impact that Stop Making Sense has on its viewers. By bringing together these three forms of audiovisual entertainment and stripping them down to their bare essentials, they show just what its relationship is to us. It compels us to feel, to move, to, to share in an experience, and to be connected. Connected. I mean, for God's sake, just look at how much fun the band are having on stage and how much fun the audience are having too. The atmosphere of this thing is at once both electric and primal. In keeping itself so simple, it also guarantees a contemporariness that can't be afforded to other concert movies. Don't get me wrong, that context can often be a significant part of enjoying those films, but the power that it gives to stop making sense to question and analyse is particularly unique. What really brings us all together for me is its construction, that fusing of theatre music and film. The importance of those emotional connections that we have made to medias from all of those different formats are on display in Stop Making Sense. By fusing them together while stripping away any perceived distractions, it proves the fundamental need that we have for audiovisual entertainment, creating a monument to the ways in which our favourite pieces of media enrich our lives. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you are also as equally obsessed with Stop Making Sense as I am, and I hope that if you aren't, then you were able to at least kind of, you know, share my love for it, and I have a lot of love for it. Fucking hell. It's worth noting that Jonathan Demi, the director, actually didn't, like, have too much of an input on what was shown on screen or kind of, you know, what the band were doing on stage. He sort of wanted to just capture it as it was. I love this quote from him where he apparently said, uh, what is it? I would love to make a movie of, of this of whatever this is, you know, whatever, like, having, you know, people running around in grey outfits on stage and some of them in giant suits, some of them in, like, yoga pants, and then you have, like, words and pictures flashing up behind you, like, fish and chips and, like, telephone box or whatever, and they bring all the band members on one by one on these giant movable stages, and, like, oh, it's... It's just brilliant. It's so damn nerdy and, and quirky, and it has this very deliberate show of intelligence behind it, and yet it is just so exciting as well. I don't want to get, like, all showy and up myself, but, like, of all the high-energy, uh, like, music performances that I've either been at or that I've seen, this is the one that compels me to dance and move more than any other by by quite a long stretch especially on those versions of like slippery people and life during wartime and girlfriend is better fucking 
god. Oh my word. The they are they are transformative performances. They are utterly transformative. They just cut to some sort of real deep urge and need to just express yourself. It's like whenever I, whenever I listen to them, I feel it. I feel it here, right? I feel it right here. And with that, enough fangirling. I'm going to leave that for the moment. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope that you're keeping well, and I shall catch you in the next one. Outfit check, baby. Guys, I've been shopping today. I've been to charity shops, been to vintage shops. I'm feeling good. I finally gave in and bought a rugby top. Every time I've been to uh, Flamingo's Vintage in Cardiff, well worth a go to if you're in the area. Um, they've got a whole section of rugby shirts. I've walked in every time for the last few months and I've been that close to buying one. I've not seen one that I've liked until today. Here it is, look at this, look at these colors. It fits like a dream. It looks gorgeous, honestly. I also binged a lot on some oversized t-shirts. I've been wanting to really expand my collection recently and I found some gems to say the least. That car there, just so the microphone can pick it up. It's a 1988 Holden Commodore. It's, the, it's an Australian car. And this is a like 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 a sporty version they did of it from I think it's tuned by Walkinshaw, Tom Walkinshaw, who from what I know are a sort of racing company, tuning company, that kind of thing. And these cars are really rare. Like they only made a few of them because they were like specially tuned. But like, sort of T-shirt. How cool is that? I like it. Right. All I want is to be no breathe. Ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. Take a look at these hands. Take a look at these hands. Fuck yeah, that's good.